Whenever you think of Slender Man, what's the first thing that comes to mind besides the man himself? Many of you would say creepypasta, while others will say marble hornets. I once shared that same sentiment, however, there's another gem on the internet connected to the Slender Man, and it would be a darn shame if you don't know what I'm talking about. So what is the subject of today's video? The Everyman Hybrid Channel, perfect for the month of Halloween. This series has compelling characters and even more fascinating threats outside of just the Slender Man. An example of one is an oddly charming yet intimidating villain with bad habits that includes a thirst for violence and an appetite for eating babies. Oh, and there's a naked white creature crawling around. <laughs> yeah, this this series is crazy. Also, the series isn't just contained solely within the YouTube channel itself. There's Twitter posts, other channels, blogs, and more. However, I don't want to make this video insufferably long, so we're only going to focus on the videos on the channel unless it's absolutely necessary to touch the other media posts. With that being said, let's first walk through the events of the story, and in the end, I'll go into more depth and share my theories. Are you still following? Great! And as always, my name is Ripestrea. Let's explore. Everyman Hybrid In the beginning, it was a group of friends creating videos with the purpose of helping people get healthier while on a budget. As for who's in the group, we get introduced to Vincent, Evan, and Jeff, who all play their respective roles in creating the channel. There's also other characters, but we'll get to that later, and initially, everything seemed pretty normal, right? We're learning yoga, stretches, exercise techniques, and food advice. However, if you're concentrating enough on the little details, you'll realize that something is extremely wrong. From the audio to the footage itself, it's like something is actively interfering with the filming. Then there's the characters, specifically Evan. There are moments where clearly he's under the weather and not feeling his best. He's also distracted and sometimes fails to realize when someone is speaking to him. He's also seen violently coughing. These are all important things to take note of for later. Speaking of noticing things, looking in the background, we can sometimes see an interesting pale figure with a blank face who's also wearing a suit, the Slender Man. It was honestly embarrassing how excited I got when I saw that creep. Speaking of which, randomly one day a little girl approached Evan and gave him a doll since a man asked her to give it to him, which is obviously alarming and what we will eventually learn to be one of Slender Man's trademarks. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Would you like to know the twist to all the past videos shown so far? You see, it turns out most of the Slender Man sightings in the previous videos were fake emphasize on the word most. Now you might be wondering, what do you mean it was fake? Turns out, they had a friend dress up like Slenderman and he occasionally appeared in the background to give the illusion that the Slenderman was haunting them. It was all meant to be fun in games, to scare and maybe trick the viewers, however, faking his appearances seemed to have made the real Slenderman appear and confront them. In episode 6, while the group of friends were getting ready to record and dress up as Slenderman, behind them in a different room was the real deal. If it's your first time watching, it would immediately catch you off guard. It was so sudden and the door shuts before we could even process what was happening. But soon Evan and Vincent forced the door open, but the entity vanished. This confused the group and for a moment they assumed maybe another friend was just pranking them, which I don't blame them for assuming it wasn't the real Slenderman. We always logic our way out of, you know, the paranormal monsters, etc. Anyways, because of that video, which shows their clear confusion and surprise, they had to come clean with the audience with their true intentions with their video series, which the truth is that it was fake. However, when looking back in their previous videos, they realized that some of the Slenderman appearances weren't just their friends, and the recent incident made the group realize that someone potentially broke into Evan's house. Because of this, they needed to take a break from creating videos, and this video was made to clear the air before their break. Additionally, in this video, they directly addressed the person who broke into Evan's home and asked them to just admit it or to just stop. <laughs> it's cute that they think it's a regular person. Anyways, let's get to After Their Break, which is a charming video of their friend group. In the group is, of course, the main crew, along with Jeff's girlfriend Jessa, another friend named Ryan, and Alex, who's Jeff's brother. It was basically a fun little vlog of the friends hiking, which was much needed enjoyment because in the future, the things to come isn't as fun. But it is interesting since the next video, we see them doing a sleep experiment. For these experiments, Evan recorded his dreams while Vincent and Jeff don't sleep in order to see the effects. For the sleep deprived test, obviously the two guys felt tired, but everything was going fine. That is until during the experiment, unexpectedly, they discovered photos scattered in a room with a few doodles, and there was also duct tape on the wall saying, can you see? The room almost looked like a shrine, and it seemed like it came out of nowhere, and they had no clue who could have possibly set it up. So, of course, this shocked the two, but they soon brushed it off and decided not to tell Evan because he was just starting to get better, and this could mess him up. This comment is obviously an important detail to take note of, because by observing Evan, we can see that there's something to be concerned about, and this is just confirmation. That and also past Twitter posts, too. Speaking of Evan, we soon see his perspective of the experiment, which is getting lots of sleep and writing logs of his dreams. The first three dreams were normal or pleasant, but the fourth dream was a nightmare. 
Specifically, he was in a town with a lot of children, but suddenly they all started vanishing. Not only that, but once he was completely alone, he could hear their screams and unexpectedly his surroundings changed into the woods and the screams grew louder. He also briefly mentioned bags, but he didn't elaborate and went back to sleep, but as you can probably suspect, he didn't get much rest. The conclusion of their experiment was, sleep is important because if you don't get proper sleep, then your reaction time becomes slow and you'll become more sluggish and less focused. And if you want to have a good dreams, it's best to sleep at a reasonable hour and to eat a good meal before bed. Nice and calm, but eventually tensions soon rise once bad things starts happening all around them. For example, during their hiking trip video, the footage starts to corrupt and an alarm could be heard. These are a few signs alerting us to the Slenderman's presence. Speaking of which, he's standing behind the crew, but he soon vanishes, which provokes Evan to chase after him as the other two hurriedly followed, but they stopped running after discovering a bunch of bags hanging on trees. They cut into one and a red liquid started to pour out, which we could assume is blood. This obviously stunned both Jeff and Vincent, but unexpectedly, Evan Evan's reaction to this was laughter. I find this reaction interesting because maybe the only reason why Evan reacted this way is because it reminded him of his dreams. He did mention bags, so this is a clear connection, and just like how people laugh when they're nervous, Evan is laughing because of how unbelievable the situation is. Now, this event is obviously concerning, and Jeff is the main one wanting to stop filming, but as you can probably guess, they didn't. Then one day, Jeff left a goodbye message saying that he needs to find someone and no one knows where he went. So Vincent and Evan went to Jeff's house to hopefully find answers and they had a bit of a conversation with Jeff's brother Alex and learned that no one could even get a hold of his girlfriend, Jessa, either. So they investigated around Jeff's room and found a USB, which we'll get back to later because we soon see what Jeff's up to. He was exploring an abandoned building, which was an old elementary school, and he shares a story about it catching on fire, but while telling the story, at some point the audio corrupts and booms loudly in our ears. Ouch. Transitioning away from that, it's late into the night and Jeff discovered medical records which gives him a lead to someone named Dr. Kornthal. So he went to the woman who once knew the doctor and the reason why Jeff wants to find him is because he might have some information on a patient named Habit, which, remember that name? Trust me, it will be important soon. Anyways, sadly, he learned that apparently the doctor died, so that was a dead end for Jeff. And in the following video, we finally get to see the contents inside of the hard drive found in Jeff's room. In that video, we see the guys kicking down a door to enter an abandoned building's basement during the daytime, but once they stepped inside, suddenly the group gets transported to outside near a bridge and water during nighttime. It was honestly pretty trippy. I thought it was like maybe editing, but it actually seems like they just walked through a door and teleported. Kind of cool and an interesting detail for later. Anyway, Anyways, in the next video, the group reunited and they explained how they returned to the burnt elementary building to find more information like the documents Jeff found and we actually see the footage of them exploring that building. And in the footage, they're clearly being stalked by the Slenderman, but they don't seem to immediately notice. And as for what they found, they discovered a letter from someone named Lenny. Who are you, my dear friend, who reached them all to me? And I look forward to our reunion in hell. Otherwise, a few of your warnings have fallen upon deaf ears. The sight of those black eyes, those markings. This flight is not human, and now it has claimed another one of us. I'm sorry, it's too late. Lenny. And after this, the footage completely lost its audio and it was a bit staticky until we eventually transition away from that to footage of Evan talking to the camera and us the audience. He no longer believes that it's just some random person pranking them and that it has to be something else tormenting them and he's furious that his friends don't want to believe that. Evan is losing his patience and at this point, Evan confesses that he wants to kill whatever that thing is that's tormenting them. But that's a later idea and we then get introduced to a new character named Jesse and the group explains to her that they're investigating all the strange occurrences happening all around them and they're hoping to find any answers connected to Jeff's girlfriend because again, she's still missing. To Jesse, this is both confusing and interesting news and later on in the conversation, we learn that Jesse's uncle is Dr. Kornthal, which is the same doctor Jeff wanted to speak to in the previous video. What a coincidence. But all she knew is that his line of work has something to do with children and besides that, she doesn't know much. By the way, Jeff has been receiving postcards which have clues that they need to solve and as for the reason why the group is still filming everything is because Vincent insists on documenting their journey. But anyways, the next place they investigated is a ruined building in the woods, which didn't seem unusual. Oh, a body holding a note and a naked pale creature crawling on all four. Is that the rake? <laughs> Damn. Rightfully so, the group ran away and later we see footage of Evan and learn from him that Jeff blames this girl from the Can You See the Word blogs, which is another character involved with the Slenderman, and it turns out she's friends with Jessa, but not only that, she was also the last person seen with her before she disappeared, so she's kind of the main suspect and why Jeff blames her. Evan, however, believes she's innocent. Evan says she's just another person struggling to survive these strange occurrences happening all around 
around them and thinks Jeff is just acting rash, especially since he got the police involved. Oh, and fun fact, during the sleep experiment videos, Evan was seen reading her blog post on his laptop, so he seems to know a decent amount about her, which could explain why he believes in her innocence. I won't go into too much detail about that blog, but as you can probably guess since I also mentioned it, Slenderman is involved. Her family died, she burned her house down, and she's now in a custody. You know, that stuff happened. But ignoring that, we returned back to that note found on the corpse from earlier and the group tried showing it to the police, but they weren't believed so the police are useless here. As for what's in the note, it's from Lenny again, and he wrote that he's going east to find a group and mentioned a doctor and left some coordinates. By the way, an interesting thing about this series is that the viewers can find packages connected to the story in real life just by going to specific locations, and usually in those packages, we gain a lot of useful information, but we'll get to that later to avoid, you know, derailing the story too much. Now back to the postcard Jeff received. It pointed the group in a direction, so that's what the group is going to tackle next. And for the next location, they went to a warehouse which didn't seem like much, but once they were getting ready to leave, Evan suddenly reacted when he saw something outside. What he saw was the Slenderman which he wanted to pick a fight with immediately. And out of everyone in the group, Evan is the most ready to throw hands, which I like. We need more people in horror projects to start swinging. <clears throat> Anyways... Uh, the footage starts to corrupt and for a moment we get stuck in a black screen until suddenly we return back to normal and it was the end of the fight which we see Evan lying on the ground in pain and he attempted to get up but was struggling and soon he vomited blood so Jeff and Vincent quickly helped him up and rushed him towards the car. It was a long car ride and at some point they saw Slenderman on the road and with this opportunity presented to them, their first reaction was to run him over. <laughs> Nice. But then the footage jump cuts to them in their homes lying on the ground, so it probably wasn't that successful. Anyways, eventually the group recovered from that incident and continued their investigation on the postcard puzzle, and at some point, while at the next location, Jeff started running and he found a necklace or chain, which is just another piece to the puzzle and a connection to Jessa. This is infuriating to Jeff because he feels like he's failing Jessa, who's still missing, and his anger is still mainly aimed towards the girl from Can You See the Words blog post. Vincent, however, thinks she's just crazy while Evan, on the other hand, is more determined than ever to kill Slenderman. But let's jump away from that for a moment and see a solo video of Evan who received a USB in the mail which has footage of Jeff's house. It looks a lot like surveillance footage and after watching it, Evan went straight to Jeff's house because in the footage he saw that Alex was badly hurt, so he wanted to talk to him and it turns out Alex is being targeted, but instead of it being Slenderman, it's the rake. Whoa. Jeff doesn't know about this, so Evan had to tell Jeff, and this obviously freaked out and angered him. As for how the rake is getting into Alex's room, it comes from his closet. So they tried looking for a crawl space, but instead they found Vincent's phone, and once they shut the door, it started to rattle and make disturbing noises, which alerted them that the rake is somehow there despite the lack of a crawl space. How nice. Anyways, the room was locked down, and it's best for them to stay away. And in the next video was something more wholesome. Friends hanging out and maybe a meet and greet. It was cute, but then Vincent got a call from Ryan, another friend we've seen before, and Vincent believes that Ryan was in a car accident. Dang. And in the following video, we get told that the group called his family to learn more and Ryan has passed away. To go into more detail, the state of his body was that his neck was broken and he was covered in bruises. The police believe the cause of his death specifically was that he was speeding and he hit something which caused him to fly out the window. But here's the shocking thing. The glass was inside the car instead of outside, meaning something outside broke the window in order to drag Ryan out. And that's not the only concerning thing. Before his death, Ryan sent the group a message about an email he received from this address, 7 habit at gmail.com. In the email Ryan received, it had an application with strange questions and requests for information, and at some point, Ryan was asked to give a pint of blood. This was unnerving, especially since there was a rule given to him which says to not seek outside help. However, Ryan didn't listen to this warning and reached out to his friends anyways, which I believe is a factor into his death. Also, the Trials of Habit is honestly really cool since it involves the viewers participating in this tournament or game thing, but to avoid stalling the story, I won't say much. Now back to everything we learned. It's interesting, but the most noteworthy thing about this video was when the footage cuts away and we see footage of Jeff secretly recording... Evan? Evan is having a conversation with seemingly nobody since it's empty on the other side of the table. Not only that, but it doesn't even seem like it's the Evan we know. He talks differently and even his mannerisms don't appear the same as before. He's even holding a blade as if it's a familiar friend. Could it be that Evan is possessed? <laughs> Anyways, the conversation Evan was having was a discussion with someone who is powerful but he doesn't seem to care and he claims that he's the one who's brought them the fishes in the first place and that he takes what he wants and he wants their blood. I'm assuming he's referring to the group we've been watching. And before the conversation continues, Jeff calls out to Evan which makes him drop the aggressive voice to sound like his 
usual self when he slowly gets up to approach Jeff while still holding the blade. Jeff, understandably, runs away. Now, you'd think this would cause a rift in the friendship, but the group filmed together soon after and it's pretty much a break out of prison and saving a damsel situation video. Jeff even tackled a security guard! <laughs> Epic. Anyways, who did they save? The woman responsible for the Can You See The Words blog post. Her name is Stephanie or Steph, but at the moment she goes by the alias Damsel, and as we already know, she's friends with Jessa, who's Jeff's missing girlfriend, and if you forgot, she was placed under custody, specifically in a hospital, and Jeff calling the police earlier could be a factor into why she was there. Anyways, what is the group's purpose for saving Damsel slash Steph? Because they needed more knowledge, and since she's also involved with the Slenderman and has connections with Jessa, it only makes sense for them to get her to join their team. However, breaking her out wasn't the smartest plan because it turns out she was going to be released on that same day, so they're kind of in a lot of trouble. Yay. I'd be fucking stoked if they weren't releasing me today. <laughs> Anyways, interrogation time. They were hoping she would know how to stop Slenderman, but she doubts there is a way to stop him. This was disappointing news, of course, and at some point, Damsel slash Steph left her phone on the table for the boys to play with, and they discovered a disturbing voicemail with a girl who's clearly freaking out. And here's the kicker. The voice belongs to Jessa, who's Jeff's girlfriend, and it seems like she saw the Slenderman and was being followed. She's desperate in the message for Steph to pick up the phone, and soon laughter and distortion took over the audio before it ends. I already suspected that Slenderman was likely responsible for her disappearance and then death, but this just confirms it. Poor Jessa. Anyways, moving on, it's a separate day and the boys received a call from a blocked number and the only words they heard were keeping Mittens warm. Mittens being the same name of Vincent's family cat who died six years ago, so they took that as a clue that they had to go to the cat's grave and, you know, maybe discover something, and what they discovered was fresh blood, which obviously wasn't from the cat, and there was also a Slenderman watching them, and this encounter caused the boys to become a little ill. Ugh. But the group aren't slowing down yet, and are still investigating, and thanks to the help of the viewers, they received an interesting CD, which they all watched. At first, it was a few random clips from their videos before switching to a black screen with the sound of static. It seemed like nothing until unexpectedly something unusual happened to the group. They were talking, but it doesn't seem like they're in control of themselves. It's more like something was influencing them to speak. And while talking, they almost sounded like a group of children arguing with a doctor about just wanting to play games that involved finding treasure and that they didn't do anything wrong. And at the end of their strange conversation, the video goes dark and after 8 minutes, the footage returns to a view of the floor. Additionally, the group seemed to have gone unconscious during this and they're all bleeding from the nose or their ears and they also can't remember what happened fully until they looked back at the recording and none of them remember saying those things. Obviously concerning stuff, especially with the bleeding and passing out, but we should take note of that strange conversation, specifically when they mentioned a doctor. As I keep saying, the only doctor we know is Dr. Kornthal, who's the same man Jeff attempted to find a while back, but was discovered to be presumably deceased, and he's the doctor that has something to do with children and is the uncle of Jesse. Whew. There will be more on him later because now we have to move on and return back to Jeff's house, which still has the rake problem. They're armed with weapons like a bat and knife and they're also wearing protective masks. The reason for this is because they're ready for confrontation and they finally discovered the hidden crawl space inside the closet, which they soon entered. It smelled horrible in the tunnel and it was a long distance, but once at the end, they found themselves randomly inside a basement, which doesn't make sense to the layout of their home and unexpectedly, all their items were gone, meaning they're defenseless. Not only that, but the crawl space that they came out of is gone. Clearly confused, the group stepped outside and discovered that they were in an abandoned building's basement, and specifically, it's the same place from that footage of the boys kicking down a door and getting transported away towards a bridge near water, you know, daytime to nighttime, different locations. Meaning this is some sort of strange teleportation situation, weirdness, hard to describe. But anyways, they called Vincent to pick them up and once they returned back home, they chained the room shut again and only returned to that issue two days later but without Alex and unexpectedly, nothing was found. Any traces of the rake seemed to have vanished, specifically that grotesque smell and that crawl space. Actually, there was one thing that was discovered, a paper clue which Jeff took. We're now returning back to the topic of Dr. Kornthal and the first person the group thought of was Jesse, who, if you forgot, mentioned that the doctor is her uncle. However, the group had to briefly pause on that plan because her grandmother was recently murdered, which Vincent explains in a video and this seemed to have angered Evan since, you know, that's her personal information and it's kind of rude telling a bunch of strangers that information. Regardless, the group eventually got around to meeting with Jesse and she does, in fact, have items connected to Dr. Kornthal. 
A binder with a lot of photos, documents, maps, and the most important discovery, a key which goes to Dr. Kornthal's rented storage unit. They obviously went to the storage and found boxes with interesting stuff inside. Tapes, pictures, weapons, and more. These items will be thoroughly investigated later, and before they could step outside of the storage unit, Jesse and the boys got separated because the door suddenly shut. So Jesse had to go find help while the guys struggled to see in the dark. Luckily, Vincent managed to turn on his lighter, but then they realized that the three of them weren't alone. And the video starts to become very glitchy and delayed, showing us small glimpses of the horrors happening inside of the unit until the footage finally starts working again and the most unexpected thing happened. Dr. Kornthal opened the unit. He stepped inside, placed a wooden horse next to the boxes, then apologized and left while shutting the door. This obviously confused the group and additionally, during this, everything was in black and white, which makes it almost seem like they traveled back in time for this brief encounter. And that this encounter was just a glimpse of the past. Maybe. It was very trippy and later Jesse appeared helping them out of the unit and they're back to the present and she's unaware of what happened inside. Wow. Now, what sparked this glimpse into the past? I'm not fully sure myself. But anyways, the items they found in the unit led to a library, which they went to and found some interesting articles. Vincent also got a girl's number named Lexi, so <laughs> that's nice. But back to the articles. They discovered a new lead who's an officer, but when they tried getting his contact information from the station, it turns out the man offed himself a year prior. Damn. But whatever. They returned home, learned a little bit more about Dr. Kornthal through the articles, and they even looked at the items found in the boxes when suddenly Alex spotted something outside and he said it's back. Alex then charged outside with the others following and Evan prevented Alex from confronting whatever he saw entering the shed, which was a good idea because Evan prevented Alex from getting hurt However, he ended up getting badly injured instead. Something inside the shed clawed at him and it's clearly not the family dog. Based on past events happening around Jeff's house, we can probably assume it's the rake. But lucky for them, they managed to retreat back inside the home and Evan began treating his injuries. Speaking of the rake, we actually get shown the footage of the creature, which is spooky. How did the boys get the footage? Have it emailed it to them, but there wasn't a clear reason why. He just sent it. I swear every time this character gets mentioned, I just want to go into more detail, but I can't right now. So continuing on, Alex is clearly terrible with handling grief since he's using a sock puppet as a substitute for his dog who likely died by the rake. Oh, and his parents died too. And the reason why Jeff isn't taking Alex to the doctor is because he's afraid that his brother will be taken away from him. He only trusts himself to take care of Alex, which the other two aren't exactly happy about, but they can't do much since it is his family. Now returning back to the items found in the storage unit, they're still trying to figure out what this one strange device is and Jeff also discovered a photo with a kid who looks oddly similar to Evan. Even Evan agreed that the kid looks similar to him and when he turned the photo around he saw writing that said Dr. Kornthal and his name, which was... It's surprising, especially since he doesn't even recognize anyone by the name James Cornthal. This will be important later, but let's now move on to the 4th of July. The boys along with Alex and Daniel, who's another friend, were just having a good time outside when suddenly the three main guys started to hear things that the other two couldn't, and this provoked Evan to grab the emergency machete he hid in, in the back of a car while Vincent and Jeff grabbed their own weapons from the shed. They then started marching towards the woods. Alex following close behind and soon they see a familiar slender monster, which made the footage corrupt and turn black for a few seconds before returning to a view of the three guys. Alex then confirms that he saw the slender man, but the three were more focused on the deer, which is now standing where slender man once stood. And alarmingly enough, Evan approached it and excitedly raised his machete, but before we get to see the attack, we cut away to a view of the guys standing on the house porch covered in blood. Jeff was confused about the situation because he knew they had intentions to kill, but that deer wasn't what they were aiming for yet they still killed it. Well, technically Evans killed it while Jeff tried to pull him off of the deer as Vincent just watched, but it still happened. And right here, during the aftermath, it becomes abundantly clear how insane Evan is becoming and how much he enjoys this. Take notes, people. Now next up, the group at this point realized that the rake is after Alex, but whenever it gets the opportunity to kill the three of them, it never does. They believe the reason for this is because they're so intertwined with the Slenderman that the Rake has no business meddling with them. This obviously wasn't something the group liked to think about because they don't like the thought of being claimed by something, but hey, at least they're not being specifically targeted by another creature and all they have to worry about is protecting Alex. So yeah. Oh, by the way, there are certain videos with interesting titles that I failed to mention because I'm focusing on the story, but this will be important later so I'll mention it now. These mysterious videos weren't posted by the three guys and they can't even see the videos, only us the viewers can. And in those videos, it's almost like glimpses into future events, and we also hear conversations that the guys likely didn't want the audience to hear. But the most noteworthy thing about these videos are the specific titles, which if you were to put them together and put them in a Morse code translator, it spells out S-O-A-H-C. It doesn't seem like anything at first, but backwards it actually spells out 
chaos. Ooh. Now moving on from that, in the following video, Evan and Alex are filming together, but it's a secret from Jeff. The reason for this secret is because it turns out Jeff doesn't want Alex, his brother who he's protective over, hanging out with Evan, who he witnessed acting unusual. But obviously Alex doesn't obey since he's friends with Evan, so the two talked and it was about the strange items they found inside of the storage unit. Specifically this black box-like device with a detector meter that apparently can alert them to the presence of the Slenderman, or technically some type of radiation that he emits. This is important because when comparing Alex's blood to Evan's blood, the meter only reacts to Evan's blood, meaning he has some type of radiation that the Slenderman also has. Pretty unnerving, especially if it could be evidence to the fact that he was marked by the Slenderman. And if it's not that, then maybe there's something within him that triggers the same radiation from a monster. <laughs> Anyways, moving forward, the main three helped out some people stranded on the road and later met with someone named Noah who's facing similar problems to them. Also, real quick, these are pretty fun cameos. Dark Harvest, Tribe 12, <laughs> But anyways, Slenderman is stalking the group as usual, and once they arrived home with Noah, they shared their findings, and one interesting piece of evidence was a Polaroid photo with faded writing, but we can see saying the words, Dr. C, who could be Dr. Kornthal. The group then found more parallels, which they weren't fully comfortable with, but hey, at least they're discovering things and have another person who can relate to their situation. Sadly, this was the calm before the storm, because the Alex and Rake problem is, you know, still concerning, Jeff seems to be having dark thoughts, Evan is always ready to arm himself with a weapon whenever something bad happens, and Vincent is struggling to return back to a normal life because of course something is going to ruin the peace. Either he's vomiting blood, Slenderman is tormenting him, or while searching for a dog, something broke into his home, and something probably bad happened to his librarian girlfriend too. Yikes. Honestly, just run luck for all of them. Speaking of which, remember when I briefly mentioned the Trials of Habit? Specifically that strange email that involved the group's friend who died from a car accident? After that incident, the group participated in the trials to get answers, but it was brief for them because they didn't last long. And remember that one rule about not getting outside help? Since the three involved another person like Noah and also their viewers and their friends, they kind of broke that rule. So remember this. Now back to the story, Vincent worriedly called Evan because he heard that something bad happened at his place, and this is when Evan explains that their strong friend named Nick broke into his home and tried to kill him. By the way, Nick didn't appear in other videos until now, and all you have to know is that he was one of the few people put under suspicion for potentially being the person who pranked the group earlier in the series, but as we already know, it was the real Slenderman who was toying with them, and it wasn't, you know, a prankster. Anyways, Nick attempted to kill Evan by beating him up, and while explaining the incident, Evan said Nick died in the end, and guess who killed him? Evan, obviously. But the situation is stranger than that. While getting choked out, Evan and Nick somehow transported away to a field near a big tree. Evan then stated that he practically blacked out during this, but he knew that he snapped Nick's neck. Ouch. And rightfully so, Evan is freaking out a bit because he feels like he's going insane. Specifically, he describes it as if something was crawling in his brain and that he heard a voice who promised to help him when he was getting choked. That's pretty alarming, but there's more. Evan discovered that in his home are small cameras that he didn't set up meaning someone has been observing him in secret. Speaking of which, the footage that we're watching are from those hidden cameras and Evan is looking directly at them as he speaks. So of course the group decided to tackle that problem first and on a different day they found a few of the cameras and also how to access them. But enough of that, now there's a Christmas special and in the beginning Vincent brings up how they still can't see any of the mysterious videos that the viewers are seeing and later he joins back with the group in the party and it's all fun and games until we cut away to footage of Jeff and Vincent sitting in the car. We also sometimes see footage of someone submerged in water, but back to the car, the two are having a conversation, and Jeff admits that he doesn't feel qualified to act as a father for his brother Alex now that their parents are dead. It's too much of a responsibility, and deep down he believes he should have been the one who died. Vincent then tries to ease Jeff's nerves because he doesn't want to see his friend so down, and while driving, another car suddenly appeared charging towards them. But we don't see the impact because we return back to the footage of the Christmas party, but then that footage gets interrupted it again with an interesting video of Steph holding a pregnancy test. Oh my, if you know, you know. We'll return to that later because for now it's another day in another video in which we see the group driving because they're going to visit Jesse. And at some point Evan got a call from Jesse who seems to be in trouble so they had to hurry to her place and Evan was the first to act, breaking into the home while the other two were trying to find their own way inside. But then suddenly Jeff and Vincent heard a thump in the other side of the home and when they checked, they saw Evan throwing the rake outside the window. <laughs> Wow. This didn't kill the rake, however, and eventually it got back up and charged at Vincent. Wait, should I call him Vinny or Vin instead? I rarely see people calling him Vincent. Uh, it's already too late now. 
Anyways, Vincent started to get slashed at by the rake, and Jeff ran away in order to grab a horn in hopes to scare the rake away, but I think that just made the rake briefly chase after him. And honestly, it really seemed like Vincent died here, but he luckily got up with Jeff's help once he returned, and they soon found Evan, who was badly injured and exiting the home. Evan soon told them that Jesse is dead, and when Vincent tried stepping into the home, Evan got mad because he didn't want Vincent recording the state of her body. Honestly, understandable. So the group eventually left the car sad and in pain. Also, during the drive, Evan was asleep while Jeff and Vincent had a discussion. It turns out that after Vincent was attacked, Jeff saw the Slenderman appear and it seemingly drove the rake away. This was surprising news because the group hadn't seen him in months and the fact that he appeared was, well, suspicious. But moving on, obviously they went to Jesse's funeral, but another bad thing happened, specifically with Alex. You see, Vincent was recording himself as he picked up Alex for the funeral, and during the car ride, Alex confessed to Vincent that he's been having dreams about the rake, and he actually got told things that will eventually happen in the future. An example being what happened to Jesse. This was obviously shocking news, and it's been going on for a while. The only reason why Alex didn't mention it before is because he genuinely thought it was just dreams connected to his trauma, but now he can't deny that these are just dreams. Vincent then grabbed the camera because it was running low on batteries, and we suddenly transitioned to a different perspective in the the car, specifically in the back seat, and it's clearly a different camera and a different time from the previous conversation. In the footage, it seems like the two are lost, which isn't great, but the worst part happens when we jump cut to a view of a stained hand lying on the ground and Slenderman standing off in the distance. The hand belongs to Vincent, who is struggling to breathe and he was worried about where Alex is. He also said, not again, as he got up and Vincent scanned his surroundings until he spotted a mysterious dark liquid on the ground. The source was coming from a bag hanging on a tree, but it's a bag much larger than what could hold a small animal. It seems like it could maybe hold a human, like Alex. Yikes. Vincent then ran towards the car and he discovered bloodstains on the glass and that his beard was gone. Oh, damn. Anyways, he soon left and in the following video, the three men spoke to the camera. First, Evans sharing his appreciation and love for Steph and the baby, then Vincent thanking the audience and promising that they'll keep pushing forward and Jeff telling the viewers to just stop watching their videos, which Vincent didn't like. Look, his whole family's dead, so it's kind of hard to blame him for being so down in the dumps. Anyways, after this, suddenly the video was interrupted with a collection of clips followed by the song, The Best Is Yet To Come. I'm positive that this is one of those things that the group didn't add and only us the viewers can see it. And in the collection of footage, we get shown clips of dead or unconscious people, the forest, dark surroundings, someone holding a knife, and lastly, someone on a porch getting stalked and later seeing someone drown. This will make sense later, I promise. Now continuing on in the next few videos, we see Vincent and Jeff looking through old findings that they have saved, and at some point Jeff remembered Marianne, which was the woman he spoke to when he was trying to get information about Dr. Kornthal. They completely forgot about her and the two decided to get into contact with her again. So Jeff called and learned that she moved and her potential whereabouts could be at a familiar abandoned building that the group had visited before. Connecting these dots were exciting for the two, and Jeff quickly left to pick up Evan while Vincent prepared everything for their journey. However, once Jeff arrived at Evan's home, it was ominously quiet despite having the lights on. Evan was nowhere in sight, and the silence was only interrupted when music could be heard. The song playing was I Can not Decide, good choice by the way, and rightfully so, Jeff was a little unnerved by this. Then suddenly, Jeff was attacked and he ended up in the basement. He was bleeding heavily and soon enough we see Evan ominously approaching which provoked Jeff to start running upstairs, and this is when we saw Nick, the friend Evan killed, telling Jeff that Evan's got him. The footage was also grey, likely to demonstrate that he's not actually there, and Jeff didn't really have time to process this and he continued running but was stopped by Evan who attacked him. Crazy stuff. So what was Vincent up to during this? Being confused and left alone for a week because he hadn't heard anything from his two friends. So eventually he decided to finally pay Evan a visit since that was the last place he knew Jeff went to and while talking to the camera he mentioned that a few viewers contacted him telling him to bring a weapon and warning him about something dangerous but he didn't exactly understood why because he didn't see what we saw so he only brought the camera and the mysterious box that they found in the storage units that detects monsters. Uh, all right. So Vincent crept around the home trying to find a way inside and his paranoia was evident. I also find this footage interesting because it looks very similar to one of the footages from the collection of random clips we were shown, one of which being a cameraman being stalked and likely attacked. But here, Vincent isn't being obviously followed and he wasn't immediately attacked. That wasn't a glimpse into the future, that's something else, like another reality. Remember this. 
Now returning back to the video, Vincent discovered that the door was wide open for him so he went straight towards the basement where he found Jeff's shoe and a lot of blood. These were obvious signs that he shouldn't stay any longer so he went towards the exit but got a quick visit from the Slenderman. Vincent of course ran, not wanting to deal with that, but since his two friends are gone, he has to continue on with the journey alone so on another day he went to the abandoned building that they discovered has a connection with Dr. Cornthal and unexpectedly while exploring the building it was like Vincent was teleporting from his home to Evan to Jeff to Steph's home. But he wasn't teleporting. It's like the building was an amalgamation of all their homes combined into one. Or like someone copied and pasted specific rooms in their homes and just put it into that building. It was obviously overwhelming and confusing and at some point Vincent saw another version of himself and his friends but in black and white and later Slenderman appeared but luckily Vincent was pulled away before anything worse happened to him and now suddenly Vincent and that person who saved him were outside. And the person who came to Vincent's rescue was Dr. Cornthal and he shares a lot of interesting information. He tells Vincent that the place they're in is his Eden and its purpose is to be the Sanctum which he successfully kicked out other monsters from entering but because Vincent is there it is now in danger of being breached because the monsters will force their way inside just to get to him. So Vincent will need to eventually leave but Dr. Cornthal will give him some time to recover. Additionally, to motivate Vincent, Dr. Cornthal tells them that they can't be beaten and the fact that they're still standing is proof of that. Honestly, this doctor is pretty cool and after Vincent recovered from his injuries, Dr. Cornthal left him with some advice. The smartest option is to just duck and run. Dr. Cornthal then guns down a monster and drops Vincent off in a safe location and left soon after. That was nice. Now what was Evan up to? Killing some people to take over their home to use as his home base and later setting up a torture room with his new companion who is an unknown and likely non-human cameraman. Well actually, this isn't really Evan. Not anymore at least. Everyone, say hello to Habit. He's fun and disturbing. Now, why did he need a torture room? For Jeff, who we soon see once the room was ready. We also see glimpses of the torture, but not the full thing, and mainly we see the conversation before the torture happens. Habit first taunts Jeff for discovering a breakthrough just to be taken out of the game, but he also compliments Jeff's smarts because Habit enjoys the fact that it seems to irritate the Slenderman. Another thing that irritates the Slenderman is the fact that he can't control Jeff, that he can't have power over him. It's the same issue with Dr. Cornthal and Steph. When he can't have power over someone, he takes everything away from them. Habit then describes Evan as an animal who rushes towards conflict while Vincent is a leader type who tries to keep everyone moving forward. As for Jeff, he's the problem solver of the group which makes him a clear threat. So Habit has to kill him and the only reason why it took him so long to target Jeff is because he wants to torment him first. To specifically break him by killing his family and loved ones. And now all that's left is the three guys but according to Habit, more can still be taken from them. So Habit plans to take away any strength left body and mind. And genuinely, this makes me feel sad. I like Jeff's character, but damn it, Habit is a cool antagonist. Speaking of which, Habit sends Vincent a video in which Vincent mistook Habit for Evan, and in the video, Vincent saw Habit choke out Daniel, who's a friend we've already seen before, then it switches to a different clip of Steph with her eyes closed and behind her is Habit holding her baby while covered in blood, and lastly, we see Jeff, who Habit soon sets on fire while telling Slenderman that he can have him, but this seems more like a taunt or a big F you to the Slenderman. I don't know. These two don't exactly like each other, I'll just say that now. Anyways, now Vincent is truly alone. This is bad, right? Hope is all lost? Well, not yet, because suddenly Evan snaps back to being himself and he's obviously confused about what's going on. That is until he started wandering around the home Habit took over and seeing specific locations triggered memories of what happened when he was possessed. And after finding that dark torture room, he was clearly in agony and even if the audio was gone, you can tell he was crying out and screaming while aggressively punching the ground with his fist. It was pretty emotional to watch and after this breakdown, Evan spoke to the camera and confessed some pretty terrifying things. He remembered Jeff's torture, the fire, how he got the house he's locked in now, what happened to Steph, his baby's cries, and lastly, the feeling of her bones against his teeth. Um, you see, um, I believe this is, um, insinuating that he, uh, ate his baby? <laughs> He also remembers the things Habit said and more. All these things are obviously eating away at him to the point where he plans to end himself by entering the woods to attack the monsters tormenting him. Either he dies or those monsters do. He doesn't care. He just wants them to stop. So eventually Evan manages to leave the house and he heads straight towards some woods with weapons ready to fight anything that comes at him. But let's step away from that for a moment and return to Vincent. It's a separate day and there's a sketchy person standing outside of his door. Well, it turns out the sketchy person was Evan. Of course, Vincent is cautious because of the things he saw, but after hearing Evan out, he let him in. And what we learned from Evan is interesting. He did manage to get into a fight with one of the monsters and it led to him having his intestines fall out. But as we can see, it doesn't even look like he has a scratch on him. Speaking of which, remember the injuries he received from the rake when he was protecting Alex? Turns out he doesn't even have any scars from those incidents, which adds to how strange it is that any injuries he receives suddenly vanishes. 
Evan believes the reason why he's like this is because those monsters refuse to let him go, so he can't die, which sucks because, you know, he has to live with the guilt. And after that conversation, Evan then went to rest while Vincent went to his basement to speak to the camera alone and to share his thoughts. He has an idea to summon Habit, which is clearly a dumb idea, but at this point, Vincent feels like he's walking in circles and he just wants answers, even if it means getting it from someone that dangerous. So the two plan on summoning him, and Evan also gave Vincent a weapon in case of emergencies, and the two had a bit of a heart-to-heart -heart since they're the only people they have left. And with that, they soon summon Habit, and when Vincent confronted Habit, Habit first joked about the ritual they performed, and then mentioned the fact that their loved ones are dead, one of which being Lexi, who was Vincent's girlfriend. Bringing her up made Vincent a bit emotional and even unable to speak, but eventually Vincent tells Habit that he wants answers. This was humorous to Habit, who then tells Vincent this was a bad idea. Why? Because the outcome will obviously lead to death. But he decided to hear Vincent out, and Vincent explains that Habit is the only one who speaks, meaning he's the only one they can communicate with and potentially find an agreement with. And surprisingly, Habit liked this response enough for him to agree with helping Vincent out. He respects the reckless bravery Vincent and Evan demonstrated, so Vincent will live another day. What a fun team-up that will end up testing Vincent's sanity. And the first place they started to investigate was through Lexi's belongings. They discovered notes which revealed that she was being tormented, and she found hidden cameras in her home, which sounds very similar to what the guys went through, and because of this, Vincent can't help but blame himself for bringing chaos into her life because it led to her death, and surprisingly, Habit comforts Vincent by telling him that it wasn't his fault. Humans are social creatures, so it was only natural for Vincent to want a connection with someone. Habit then tells Vincent that he's like the guardian who wants to protect everyone, but that doesn't matter now, and Habit prefers if Vincent remains strong because in the future there's going to be a lot of bloodshed, so Vincent promises that he'll keep pushing forward, to which Habit is pleased to hear. And just like Habit said, there was a lot of bloodshed which Vincent had to help with by kidnapping people and watching them perish on camera, some of which who were viewers who just wanted to help the crew by finding these mysterious packages with important information. Damn, poor guy. Then one day, Habit allowed Vincent to speak with Evan because he had a lesson in which required to have a conversation with Evan. The conversation centered around the message on Evan's back which reads, Vin, grandfather's nickname? The two thought about this message and soon realized that they can't remember any of their family members' names. Not only that, but they can't even remember what they looked like. It's all a blur, which made Evan irritated because he thought their memories were taken until Vincent started to reflect. Vincent then asked Evan to explain what his house's layout looks like, to which Evan mistook Vincent's house for his and his home for Vincent's house. Vincent then explains the events that happened when he was exploring that strange abandoned home, specifically how the layout was all of their homes combined into one, and now that he's thinking about it more, Vincent realized that their homes were in reality just one big house. This conclusion confused Evan, and Vincent continues by explaining that their lives are fiction. Their families and even their memories were just fabrications and the only things that were real was that house. This revelation must have been too much for the two, so they stopped there, and the following video was a different day and we see Vincent crushing pills into a drink so he could drug a visitor named Sean because Habit ordered him to. And at this point, Vincent has brought so many people to Habit for him to kill or torture and he just wants to know what's the point of it all. So Habit explains that these people were used as either bait, a lesson for Vincent, or maybe personal motivations. Regardless, Vincent is tired of it all. Sure, he said he could handle any future bloodshed, but he doesn't want to be responsible for another death, so he's out. He would rather die and demands to be let out, to which Habit knocks him out. Obviously, Vincent Vincent can't get out of this predicament that easily, and when he eventually woke up, he found himself in a locked room similar to Jeff's bedroom with a mysterious countdown. He soon investigated around the room and discovered a strange box and a gun which he could use to defend himself, which is great. And once the timer hit zero, the door to the room opened, and after leaving, he somehow ended up in the snow, and then he was chased down by people in masks. Lucky for him, he had a key which mysteriously appeared in his pocket, and it unlocked the door to an apartment, which is presumably safe? And at some point, Evan appeared, temporarily not under control, and took refuge with Vincent, which allowed them to have a moment and to share their troubles. First, Evan admits that he feels like a monster because of the things he's done under Habit's influence, and then Vincent says that he feels like a monster because of all the bad things he's done, he's done on his own volition. Eventually, to get their minds off of all the suffering they've been through, they decided to play games, and all I can say is that at least they have each other? Actually, never mind. Sadly, their time together wasn't long and Evan disappeared and we learned from Vincent that he was stuck in that apartment for far too long. Luckily, he gets given food sometimes and he even got a piercing mysteriously. However, it's not a comfortable stay. Habit occasionally taunts Vincent, the conditions inside the home aren't exactly favorable, and Slenderman is stalking from the windows, but at least it seems like he can't come in. Honestly, the biggest problem is getting driven insane from solitude. Speaking of which, Habit eventually pulled Vincent out of that hellhole of an apartment to play a fun little game that involves hunting each other down. Vincent, however, chose to run to find a way out instead of playing Habit's game, but he was soon caught and we hear the audio of their conversation. 
Abbott is still his crazy energetic self while Vincent admits that he checked out ages ago and he stated specifically that he's been trapped in that apartment for two years, which he questions the purpose of but Habit just laughed at his irritation. Vincent then said he would rather die at this point until Habit said that they were now ready for war. War on what? The Sunderman, of course. So Vincent can die yet because he's essential to Habit's plan and Habit tells him to remember the North Star before they soon went their separate ways and Vincent gets transported away to a basement with a gun that Vincent used on himself, but he's still alive as we can see, meaning he can't take his own life. Escape isn't that easy. We then move on to another day and Vincent tells the viewers to ignore any packages they might have received and to not help him for their own safety. It's best to just not get involved and lastly he tells us that he can now see the hidden videos on the channel that he couldn't see before. That's great and painful. Also, also, despite Vincent's warnings, people still got curious about the packages and they still wanted to help Vincent, so they looked inside and discovered recordings, which they posted online for Vincent to see and listen to. These tapes are interesting to say the least because, shockingly, Vincent can hear his own voice. Specifically, he's listening to another version of himself who's experiencing similar issues like run-ins with the Slenderman and the Rake. These are called the Princeton Tapes, and it's a collection of tapes with a lot of information that Vincent finds interesting because there's connections to Dr. Cornthal, a place called Fairmount, and a group of children. That and it's literally his voice who he's listening to, so obviously this can't be ignored. So Vincent demands Habit that they need to go investigate and find Fairmount, but Habit didn't join, and he was irritated with Vincent because he's ruining his plans, but he still let Vincent go on the journey alone, and made him take the monster detector box and also a better camera. And this was honestly a very testing journey because Vincent sees manifestations of his dear dead friend Jeff, who attempted to lure Vincent away, but he refuses to potentially get tricked and always avoids Jeff whenever he sees him. And additionally, during the journey, Vincent complains to the viewers about the most important rule, which is to not get outside help. Yet the viewers are plastering details all over the internet, which isn't great. He appreciates the viewers' help, but it's frustrating nonetheless. He also uses this time to apologize to those who he got involved with, and after an extremely long car ride, he was only two hours away from the place, but he had to stop and rest since it was late and exhaustion was kicking in, and he didn't want to risk crashing. However, this wasn't a good idea because bright lights started to blind him and a buzzing noise could be heard until suddenly Vincent was transported outside into the woods, where Jeff continued to appear, and later he was transported to a beach area, which caused the monster detector to go off, but luckily he got transported back to the area close to the car once he stepped into the water. My voice cracked. <clears throat> Anyways, it's a lot, I know. This journey isn't meant to be an easy one. Now let's briefly switch away to a different perspective and see what Habit is up to. He's still in the house that he shared with Vincent before he left and in the background on a TV, we can hear someone who sounds very similar to Vincent crying out for help. Could this be foreshadowing? We'll find out soon. Speaking of which, Vincent has arrived at the Fairmount home. But we should pause here just for a moment to give you some backstory about Fairmount home. Throughout the series, the viewers have been helping the Everyman crew by discovering packages and looking through documents and tape recordings. In these findings, we learn that Dr. Cornthal worked in Fairmount, and he's a psychiatrist specializing in childhood traumas. And four children he helped have familiar sounding names. Vincent, Evan, Jeff, and Steph. These kids are nicknamed the Mining Town Four, and Dr. Cornthal goes on to adopt them. And despite the names, these aren't the group we're following in the present day because it was back in the 1970s, and those children soon go on to die and the how is likely connected to Slenderman. Other additional information we learn that I find interesting is that Evan, who we'll refer to as Fairmount Evan, only responds to the name Habit, and that he killed a nurse and a few rabbits. With this knowledge in our heads, now we can continue. Vincent is wandering down the path and he plays the Princeton tapes at the same time in hopes to make connections with the environment and what he's hearing. Actually, we should pause again because I should go into more details about those tapes as well. This is back in the 1990s and Vincent from those recordings who we'll refer to as Princeton Vincent goes on to learn about the Fairmount children and obviously he was surprised to see photos of a kid who looks oddly similar to him when he was younger and who shares the same name. Princeton Vincent was also facing problems with monsters like the Slenderman and the Rake, so to get answers, he started recording his journey and went to investigate by having a meeting with one of the doctors in Fairmount who's named Peter. But according to the recordings, while talking to Dr. Peter, Princeton Vincent died from a seizure at the end, and that was the final tape. However, something unexpected happened in the recording while present Vincent was exploring the abandoned place. Specifically towards the end where Prince and Vincent was supposed to die, but instead of that, Dr. Peters started to act strange, more hostile and aggressive, yet familiar too. He feels very similar to Habit. This was obviously surprising to Vincent since this was supposed to be the end of the recorder, yet it keeps playing and it's playing things that no one has ever heard before. And the more Vincent continues to explore, the more the recorder plays. Princeton Vincent is now on the run, trying to escape Peter who's under Habit's influence, and he mentioned that blood is filling the doctor's eyes and that each step he takes gets followed up with a thump. 
Now back to Vincent, while exploring, he found dolls and witnessed manifestations of his friends. For example, seeing Jeff and Evan having a conversation, or more like Evan struggling to hold himself back from being influenced by habit, and Jeff trying to help him. Obviously, his friends aren't actually there, and what I can say is, there are different iterations. This will make sense later. Anyways, Vincent continues to explore while listening to the recorder and we learn that Princeton Vincent was trapped for seven days and that the layout of the building makes no sense because one moment he believes he's heading towards the exit and the next he's somehow deeper in the building. Habit has also been tormenting him by using the intercoms to repeat a poem. Now back to the present, suddenly the Slenderman interrupts Vincent's expiration by appearing, so Vincent has to run, but while running, he heard in the recorder that Princeton Vincent mentioned a black locked box, which coincidentally was in his path while running. So he took it and kept moving until he was safe. And once he was in the clear, he discovered more dolls on the ground, and in the box was a paper with symbols and a map. Sally didn't have much time to process because the Slenderman appeared once more, so he had to continue running, and went to another building that the monster detector wasn't beeping at. But the building seems to make no sense. He was lost and stuck and he saw Jeff and Evan, but he moved past them and after 7 hours, he found himself on the rooftop and while there, he spotted an interesting symbol inside of a room that looks like the North Star. And if you remember what Habit said, remember the North Star. So he enters the room and the recorder turns on one last time and we hear Princeton Vincent aggressively scribbling on a paper, then we hear his demise by the hands of Habit. As for what was found inside the room, there was some drawings of the Slenderman, a monstrous creature, and the North Star. So he took the drawings, told himself he refuses to die there, and soon continues moving until he eventually is outside. Also, briefly interrupting his footage was a clip of Evan and Jeff running outside, but let's now step away from that and see what Habit was up to. It almost seemed like Habit was having an existential crisis and change, was something he seemed to be hung up on. He also mentioned how Evan is becoming more difficult to keep under his thumb, and later he mentioned how the group found a father who I'm assuming he's talking about Dr. Cornthal, which this fact seems to irritate him. He also shares more information about himself, saying he's been around for ages, watching civilizations rise and fall, witnessing humanity evolve, so he doesn't care if he's being filmed and witnessed by the viewers because we'll eventually turn into dust in the wind. Habit then sits down and we suddenly switch to footage of Jeff, Evan, and Dr. Cornthal, who made a plan that involves Jeff and Evan finding a transmission tower to send a message that says, stop watching. By the way, this message appeared on other social media posts, but anyways, we then see the two meet back up with Dr. Cornthal to continue discussing their plans, and they're hoping to avoid giving away something that's on a similar scale to a nuke, which I'm assuming they're talking about the North Star. Speaking of which, we return to Vincent who's eating a meal in his car while explaining his theory that the drawings he has are almost cloaking him, acting as protection since the Slenderman hasn't come near him since obtaining them. That's an interesting thought, and later on he receives a text from an unknown number which has coordinates and a message telling him to go there. So he goes to the location and Habit was there waiting for him and holding a shotgun. Vincent asked him why he was sent here to which Habit tells him that he's going to die today. This confused Vincent because he thought Habit had a plan that needed him to which Habit said he did have a plan, but Vincent ruined it. But once Vincent showed off the drawings he collected, Habit changed his tune and he was delighted with this discovery and told Vincent that they're going to have a lot of fun. So they stepped inside the cabin, Vincent shaved his hair, and the two started to talk until suddenly Vincent's phone started to ring. This made Habit laugh because who could possibly be calling him since all his friends are dead? Regardless, Vincent stepped outside to answer and it was Dr. Cornthal. Dr. Cornthal refers to himself as Vincent's father, which confused Vincent a bit. Then Cornthal continues by telling him that Vincent needs to stop what he's doing. Vincent, however, said that it's been eight years and this is the only option if they want to end it. But Cornthal argues that there is another option and if Vincent doesn't trust him, it will lead them all in the wrong direction. It will destroy everything, so he needs Vincent to stop, but Vincent refuses and hangs up the call. Damn. Vincent then returns to Habit and notices how strange the cabin is. There's staircases that don't make sense, hallways that lead to nothing, and there's even this heavy weight that Vincent feels while wandering around. So Habit explains that they're in a place that's sick and in a weird state which Vincent should be getting used to soon, and Habit then grabs a knife and moves to the kitchen, and while looking around, Vincent spotted photos of events that never happened, which confused him. So Habit explains that Vincent's life was a lie, and that multiple lies were set in motion, so more things like these photos will potentially pop up. And the reason why these photos exist is to give proof to those lies of a life that was fabricated for Vincent, and obviously Vincent's path split off drastically, so these lies are just that. Lies. And it's both obvious and painful. However, Habit says that Vincent can't have a good life again, only if they succeed with their plan. So they do a training montage, teaching Vincent how to use a gun, but Vincent is honestly confused about how an ordinary gun and knife can kill a godlike being like Slenderman, to which Habit shows off a tool similar to a branding iron with a familiar symbol. Habit then tells Vincent that he should know what this item is, since he made it, or technically a past iteration did, and Habit then explains to Vincent that during the upcoming ritual, he needs to ignore the ghosts and the voices all around him because they'll try to take him away, 
so Vincent needs to stay focused. And with that, they moved outside and Vincent had to stick the branding iron in the fire while thinking about all his past sufferings. Then he brands the symbol onto the knife and gun. With this step completed, they had a bit of a lunch break which was oddly funny and adorable to watch. And after eating, Habit explains that the symbol is really old and was forgotten by many. It means pain and lethality. And what it does, it brings mortality to things that don't have it. Now imagine what that can do to someone like Vincent. A single baby cut could lead to instant death. As for Habit, it just brings a lot of pain. So Vincent needs to be extra cautious when handling that blade, which he takes note of. And soon tomorrow rolls around and it's the big day to kill Slenderman. The two guys are outside with their weapons and the sun is high in the sky. However, Vincent is clearly confused because he thought this was going to be a long journey, yet they're not too far from the cabin. So Habit explains that their journey just started and he takes the knife from Vincent and unexpectedly throws it towards the trees. Habit then explains that Dr. Kornthal built his cabin there because he's smart and that the woods are sick and old. They need to be quiet and close together to avoid being detected because once discovered, a threat will pop up from behind the trees and get them. So they have to play it smart. But then Habit takes Vincent's glasses, which sucks because how can he see? And Habit tells him that he'll still hit his target because it's a scatter gun. Anyways, what's the plan? Well, it turns out Habit wasn't helping Vincent with the goal to kill Cinderman. Instead, he wanted Vincent to kill Evan and also die in the process. Now, I believe it's about time that I mention this. Habit is a lot smarter than you would expect. Throughout the entire story, he's like a puppet master controlling the strings or a director guiding everyone where he wants them. He also has a lot of knowledge about people's actions and what they could do next, and he uses this to his advantage to get what he wants in the end. Habit is basically a wild card within a deck which, funny enough, a viewer found a package with a deck of cards and Habit's name was on the Joker card. Yeah, we saw that person die. <laughs> But back to the story, Habit then goes on to say that it's time to bring a new beginning and he spins around joyfully and with his back towards Vincent, Vincent raises the shotgun and says that there's only one problem with this and it's that Habit needs Vincent to die to which Vincent says that he refuses to let Habit win and that he plans to go into those woods and end everything but suddenly Habit turns around to face Vincent but it wasn't Habit anymore. It's Evan, and Evan proceeds to punch Vincent until he could take the gun and put it down. Vincent then tries to reason with Evan, but he soon gets knocked to the ground, and he told Evan that Habit wants them to die and that he needs to stop. Evan, however, said that he was shown what Vincent did and that Vincent is a snake. What did he saw? He saw Vincent setting up all those cameras and that he apparently started everything. Evan then proceeds to punch Vincent more, and he seems almost conflicted with what he's doing since he's apologizing for a moment, but he didn't stop because he can't forgive Vincent. We then see a clip of Vincent in the past arguing that they need to keep filming. Now, to be more specific with what Evan is saying, it turns out Vincent was under the influence of Slenderman the entire time, keeping them continuously filming even when it was harmful or distasteful content, and he apparently led Jeff's brother Alex to his death. And again, he was the one responsible for all the hidden cameras. Now, I don't think Vincent had intentions to be malicious towards his friends, but because he was filming and pushing the group forward with investigating all the Slenderman stuff, he was a big factor into why so many bad things happened to the group, and this is why Evan is hostile towards him because Habit showed him this hidden side of Vincent. And the reason why us, the audience, were none the wiser is because Vincent was an unreliable narrator, and he constantly tried to present himself as the hero to the viewers, so he only showed us the good. But in this video, thanks to Habit's interference, we actually see a few clips during the fight that doesn't shine a good light on Vincent, one of which was when Vincent was on a car ride with Alex. It turns out there was a deeper meaning why Vincent turned off his camera and why we switched to a different perspective in the back seat. Vincent was trying to hide the rest of the conversation. For their conversation, Alex explains how the rake warned him to stay away from Vincent and Evan, but as we already know, on that same day, Alex died and Vincent was likely a bit responsible. Now back to the fight, Vincent isn't doing too well. He's kicked to the ground with Evan on top of him, so he had to use a rock to bash against Evan's head and now both are in extreme pain. But at least they managed to get up to continue fighting and Vincent stepped closer to the woods, which Evan followed. Evan then says that he doesn't want to do this, but after everything Vincent has done, he has no choice and tells Vincent that he's not going to win because he can't die. Real quick, if you forgot, Evan rapidly heals from any injuries he receives. And he actually got into a fight with a rake, which ended with his intestines falling out. But as we can see, he's still alive and he's technically immortal, which is why he's confident that he can't die. And he soon breaks Vincent's leg while calling him a monster. Now, his confidence is great. But remember, Vincent has a knife branded with a symbol that can turn godlike beings mortal. And he soon manages to get his hands on the knife that Habit threw earlier and stabbed it into Evan's side. Evan then takes the knife from Vincent and reiterates that he can't die, but soon the pain kicks in and he rolls off of Vincent 
and starts to vomit. Vincent then argues that Evan is more of a monster compared to him because of all the things he's done to his friends and his baby, which made Evan attempt to slash at Vincent, but Vincent soon steps back and with a broken leg, he pushes himself towards the cabin as Evan continues to vomit before eventually standing up and realizing that he's dying. Evan can't help but laugh at this fact as Vincent soon returns with a shotgun, and Vincent no longer cares that Evan is dying because Evan sees him as a monster, so why should he care? Honestly, Vincent is really offended by this and he soon shoots Evan in the stomach, to which Evan responds by throwing the knife at Vincent. And as we we already know just a single cut from that blade could mean seconds until death for an ordinary person. Anyways, after that attack, Evan lowered his head and goes silent, while Vincent begins to gag and vomit. He then drops to the ground and crawls towards Evan, saying that he's not a monster and telling Evan's body that they can't die here, but once he leans against the tree and the cameraman slowly walks away, we already know it's too late. Vincent grabs onto his neck where he got the injury from the blade and the video ends. But it's not the end of the story just yet. There's one last video, the final video, which is called Introductions, and coincidentally, it's the same title to the first video. In this video, we hear the song We'll Meet Again playing in the background, and what we see first is clips from the past before transitioning to a view of Dr. Cornthal, Jeff, and Evan approaching a tree where Vincent is lying on the ground rubbing his neck. And during this moment, he realizes that his injury was gone and that his hair has grown back. So where are they? A different dimension which I believe could be Dr. Cornthal's sanctuary, and it's where the crew meet, and where they stay when they die or get possessed, and where they wait until all of them are dead. More on this later. Evan soon helps Vincent up while Jeff gives him a friendly punch in the shoulder, then Vincent looks at Dr. Cornthal with sorrow in his eyes before saying I effed up dad, to which Dr. Cornthal gives him a hug for comfort. What happened was not okay, but what can they do? So they began to walk off and Dr. Cornthal reaches for the camera, but Vincent tells him that they don't need it anymore, so they walk off into the distance, disappearing out of sight. And this is the end. Pretty depressing and confusing, huh? Well, let's now continue on to the next segment of this video. Explaining the story. So what is going on? Well, you know how when you die in a video game, you can reset and try again until you either succeed or die once more? That's kind of what's happening here. The crew are constantly resetting and dying and we're watching one of their iterations. And in this story, there are three major iterations that we know of. The Fairmount iteration, the Princeton iteration, and the Everyman Hybrid iteration, which is what we experienced. In addition to that, the crew are basically all trapped in this reset cycle and Slenderman is likely the main source that's keeping them all trapped. Also, I don't believe the crew remember their past iterations since they genuinely seem surprised to learn about about their past iterations, and also the only way to end an iteration is to have Jeff, Vincent, Evan, and Steph all die. But not only that, Slenderman has to not interfere with their deaths. For example, there are many iterations that we actually saw in past videos, specifically those clips that interrupt their footage that shows the crew dying, like them drowning, or getting hit by a car, or seeing Jeff's body lying on the ground, you know, those examples. Those are basically small iterations where the group members' deaths get interfered with in order for the game to continue being played. And remember when Habit burned Jeff's body? This was likely to prevent Slenderman from bringing him back. With that being said, there's also another comparison we can make about this story besides video games. It's like a stage play in which all the characters have their own roles to play. Vincent the voyeur, Jeff the guardian, and Evan the firebrand. But let's be more specific from what we saw in the series. Vincent documents everything throughout his journey, no matter how bad it gets, and he has a desire to be the hero, but because of his stubbornness, or missteps, he ends up ruining things. Then there's Jeff who attempts to stop Vincent from continuing to record and who tries his hardest to look after his friends, but his psyche gets tested constantly with each death and because of his smarts and investigation skills, that's what inevitably leads to his death. Also there's Evan who is always ready to fight and jump into action, but becomes a tool used by greater evils in the world. You know that one saying, an Icarus who flies too close to the sun? It's oddly fitting for all of these guys. As for side characters like Dr. Cornthal, he's the father and outsider who carved his way into the story into Slenderman's game in hopes to save his children, but that's not exactly an easy job as we witnessed. Speaking of which, the villains in this story are obviously Slenderman and Habit, but they also play another role, which is the directors. Slenderman keeps the crew alive and uses his influence to likely keep Vincent recording, and the purpose for this is because he likely wants to spread the knowledge of his existence because it's what gives him more power and influence. As for Habit, he pushes the crew in directions he wants them in while showing the audience clips that Vincent tries to hide. Not only that, but Habit seems to have become more of a puppet master compared to Slenderman, especially towards the end of the series. And this leads me to the next part, explaining Habit's motivations. Habit First, what is Habit? A ghost? A demon? A god? Clearly a monster, but besides that, he's actually quite mysterious. He claims that he's been around for ages, stating that he's possessed past serial killers, and outside of the story, we actually see a drawing from the actor of Evan, which is an illustration of a wolf parasite thing that could be Habit's true form, or maybe just one of many. Regardless, what I believe Habit is, he's the embodiment of his name, the embodiment of bad habits. Intrusive thoughts, even. Since the beginning of time, humans have always battled against their dark urges, and maybe, just maybe, 
This gave birth to an entity that corrupts those who have the most trouble with controlling their dark thoughts, and this entity makes them become monsters. But that's just a fun thought, we don't know for certain, and I could just be talking out of my butt. Speaking of which, it's time for me to share what I believe were Habit's motivations towards the end of the series. I believe he wanted to take away Slenderman's influence over the cycle, or specifically the power he obtains from those cycles. And the only way Habit could do this is by going after Vincent the Voyeur. Hear me out, what do the past iterations have in common? The entire journey was being documented, either on paper, a recorder, or presently, a camera. And because these things were shared and spread around, this means the existence of the Slenderman is also spread out, and that's what gives him power. The knowledge of him in other people's minds is what gives Slenderman influence. So to cut off his power supply, Vincent has to be stopped because he is the one constantly spreading the information. And the only way to do this is by breaking Vincent's spirit and desire to keep documenting, which he seemed to succeed in. Also, the chances that they'll continue repeating the cycle of iterations after this one is still high because who knows how they can stop it. However, they can now have a leg up in the game by giving Slenderman this handicap. If they're all on equal level, then they'll have a fighting chance and this is Habit's motivations. And remember back to that one video where it seemed like he was having an existential crisis? You see, just like the crew, Habit is just as trapped in the cycle as they are. And because of this, I believe that after a while of being stuck and after realizing that Evan is becoming more difficult to possess, this little game they've been playing is just no longer fun or interesting for Habit. He wants to start anew, he wants a change. Not only that, but Habit used to work alongside Slenderman, but there wasn't exactly loyalty, which is why it was so easy for Habit to go rogue. And towards the ending of the series, we see Habit breaking Vincent down so many times, for example, causing and witnessing a lot of deaths, keeping him locked up in solitude in that apartment, and later showing Vincent the consequences of his actions by making him fight against Evan, and Evan being the one who lectures him about the things he's done. All of this influenced Vincent so much that when he died and appeared in Dr. Cornthal's sanctuary, he realized how much he ruined things, and shockingly at the end is when he wanted to stop recording and abandoned the camera. So in the end, Habit's plan succeeded. He got Vincent to stop documenting and in turn he cuts off Slenderman's source of power. And for the next iteration, no one, and I mean no outside viewers, will see their journey. Because it will just be them figuring out how to stop the Slenderman on their own, which could give them an advantage, and maybe one day they'll figure out how to break the cycle. Huh. This makes Habit seem like a good guy because it sounds like he's helping the crew, but he's technically doing this for selfish reasons if you think about it because by breaking the cycle that means he's free of it as well. But that's just a theory, I'm assuming that's his motivations. He just wants to stick it to the man and do his own thing. Also more proof to him not being a good guy is that I'm positive that he's hunting down the iterations of the crew inside Cornthal's sanctuary. Uh, that's a little bit of a confusing mess though. Moving on now. Conclusion. And this is the end of the Everyman Hybrid Let's Explore video. I hope I shared my thoughts clearly. Even with the script, it feels like I'm rambling and this story does have a lot of confusing elements, but I guess that's a good thing because that allows the audience to solve the puzzle pieces on their own. And honestly, I had a hard time putting my thoughts into words, but after looking through other people's theories, it helped me a lot with coming up with my own conclusion. But I'm still willing to hear out your theories because I'm open to anything. And bro, I don't know how long this video will be, but if it's close to an hour, <laughs> thanks for sticking around this long. The recording is almost four hours. <laughs> I'm suffering. But anyways, if hearing me summarize the whole story brings you nostalgia or gives you motivation to check out the channel itself, Links are in the description. Go watch Everyman Hybrid, even if I spoiled it already. There's a lot of things that I didn't mention to avoid making this video any longer than it already is, so you'll most definitely see something interesting or have a good laugh from their shenanigans or have a good scare. Also, it's just good, so go watch it, you weirdos. And lastly, don't be afraid to leave any recommendations in the comments for a series you want me to cover on the channel. With that being said, as always, my name is Ripesreya. Don't forget to like, subscribe, do that funny little notification thing, maybe leave a comment, and goodbye!